mind and conditioning. Everyone is born fresh. For the child, everything is new and unknown. The child does not have any idea about things and therefore cannot distinguish between them. The child is not even aware of his own body. Slowly and slowly with mother's touch, the child starts recognizing his body. Then he starts recognizing the mother, father and other family members. Thus the process goes on. Thereafter the child starts recognizing his own name given by the parents. By the time the child gets identified with more things like my body, toys, these things are good and these things are not good and so on and so forth. Slowly and slowly a belief system is formed which defines good and bad for the child. Society, parents, religion, and upbringing plays an important role in shaping the belief system of the child. Once established, the life continues with the belief system. Such are the conditionings. This belief system protects the innocent and pure child because if we act according to the society, then we are accepted Otherwise, we have to face their criticisms. A small children often play and suck their thumbs, explore their genitals, and eat sand and dirt. But mothers stop them from doing so. So the child comes to know that these things are not allowed. This information forms the belief system of the child in a subtle way, every child is programmed to act in a certain way. Every child goes through this programming and starts functioning accordingly. This programming ultimately becomes the mind. This programmed mind is similar to the operating system of the computer. However, this childhood programming is not the only factor that shapes our mind. Many beliefs we carry from our past lives too. These past lives tendencies can be compared with read-only memory of the computer. In a way, we are a biological computer our actions are decided by our programming. No person is a fool to do anything wrong. Even criminals have a valid reason to commit the crime. For a criminal, that is not the crime because in his belief system, that is the right thing to do. Every moment mind works in the background and makes us to do things. Even while reading this chapter on this book, Horizons Beyond Mind, our mind acts as a judge. Mind has many layers of conditionings. Suppose someone dies after falling from a high building in previous life then in this life that person will be afraid of heights. Every experience adds one layer to our mind. It is like a wall which is being painted with different colors every moment. Our mental state or mind is always in a flux state. With many emotions keep on coming and going Emotions start like a thought. Idea of doing anything also starts with a thought. Our mind is full of thoughts. In a spiritual world, 
mind is recognized as the thinking mechanism. Each thought is a door to the mind or thought is mind. 24 hours in a day we are thinking and dreaming. One thought comes, this is followed by another which is always related with the previous thought. All thoughts appear like a chain link. Those who practice meditation say that thoughts are always related. One thought leads to another. It is like a continuous traffic of thoughts in which one thought is followed by another in a chain link manner. Most of us believe that they are thinking good and bad thoughts. If that is the case, then we can definitely stop this process of thoughts for a while. But no matter how hard we try, we cannot be without a thought even for a single moment. Even the idea of having no thought for a second is itself a thought and will further lead to another related thought and the next thought is already set in motion and thoughts move like traffic on a busy road. Thoughts come from outside, no thought is yours. That is the reason we cannot stop our thoughts because they are not ours. Most of us not only take the responsibility for good and bad thoughts, but we even fight for them. Many times fulfilling a single thought consumes our whole energy, whole life's energy. Whatever actions we do in life starts with a thought and thought is mind and mind means programming done from so many lives. Our decisions in life are based upon our thinking but not, but no thought is ours. Then what are we doing in this life which we can call ours? Until and unless we become aware of the mind, then our life is no more than a dream because we are sleeping. No action of ours comes from our individuality, but is influenced by our minds. Mind has limitation that limits the man to mediocrity. Otherwise, if man works from its source, man has infinite potential. Meditation is one device that brings us closer to our source. Any action done with meditation is authentic and is not influenced by mind in any way. Meditation liberates man from the slavery of mind. With meditation, whatever we do is as fresh as newborn baby. All that corruption which mind has done to us loses its strength against meditation. As of now, all our actions are controlled by mind. Mind has become our master and it is not so easy to discontinue from the slavery of the mind. Even if we come to know of the slavery, then also mind is going to deceive us. Mind is very cunning and plays subtle games with us. First step towards becoming more authentic is to be aware of the games that mind plays. Thinking is the door through which mind enters again and again, all the time fooling us. It makes us do things which we feel we ourselves have decided to do. And all the time, 
this creates misery for us and then recognizes everything and every action which we have done mind deceives us in various ways mind either lives in the past lamenting or in the future aspiring all the times our thoughts are moving in the past or future always we are dreaming whenever we come to present moment mind stops for a while we are driving at 100 kilometers per hour and suddenly to stop accident we apply brakes then for a brief moment our mind stops completely because if in that dangerous situation we start thinking we will be dead in that situation the decision of applying the brakes comes from our being or from our center or from spontaneity or from our soul to apply brakes in such dangerous situation is not the function of the mind rock climbing fast driving jumping all have so much thrills in all these actions there is thrill because the mind stops for a while in those rare moments in deepest experience of sex or in ejaculation again mind stops for a while but it happens for a while and then it comes back but whenever mind stops suddenly on that occasion either we are in shock or thrill but we are never relaxed mind also stops in deep meditation but then we are relaxed and blissful that is the beauty of meditation in the state of samadhi mind stops completely sometimes when we are very relaxed then too for a moment our mind stops sometimes when we are with our lover watching sunset or seeing some beautiful things or sharing intimate moments then also mind stops for a while or we desire for something for so long and we are putting so much effort to obtain and suddenly we acquire that thing then too mind stops for a while but this happens only for a few moments and we cherish those moments throughout our lives same blissful moments are experienced in deep meditation but these moments when mind has stopped are few because mind again find some excuse to think and remain in limelight. Mind can say now that you have found your beloved, you have attained your goal, what a beautiful sunset or rose flower etc. Through thinking, mind again and again comes into play. We verbalize everything if we see a rose flower, then immediately thought comes, what a beautiful rose flower. We feel we are appreciating beauty, but mind is doing its tricks. It comes back again and again. But if we keep on meditating, then these silent moments, when mind stops, go on increasing and one day mind stops on its own. When we completely stop cooperating with mind, then it is nearing its death. Mind generates guilt feeling. That is another door through which again thinking starts and we get involved in thinking very seriously. Mind starts finding the cause why I acted that way. How can I act that way? 
I could have done something else and all the time mind is discussing something which has happened in the past. Mind loves comparison. Mind compares with its colleagues, friends and relatives. Suppose my friends gets a better pay hike than me, mind will be very disturbed. But mind is not bothered with anyone who is much richer than me. Mind only compares with close ones. Mind is the experience of our collective past, the collective unconscious. Mind knows to deal with things which it knows and is familiar with. If anything new comes up, then mind does not know how to act for it. Mind needs some time to function and adjust itself in new situation. Mind stops suddenly at the time of a possible accident because mind is not prepared for such a situation. Also mind feels uncomfortable in new situation and with new people because mind is not prepared for that. Slowly mind learns the trick how to adopt with a particular person or occasion. That is why we are different with each person. Whenever you have an option to choose, then you should go for new because it breaks the habit of the mind. It loses its grips on us. In a new situation, mind does not know how to react because mind is an experience of our collective past. This is a meditation technique. Sometimes it happens, we go to a garden or a beach then suddenly we become so much relaxed that mind stops. Mind does not know how to react in such new situations so it stops. But after a few days when you again go to that place, then you do not feel so blissful. It happens because of two reasons. Firstly, second time you went with the desire to gain peace, desire is mind. And secondly, mind is prepared now to deal with this new situation and place. On the first occasion, it was a shock for the mind. Now it is prepared. More we expect, less is the chance of it happening. Expectations, desire, Ambition, thoughts are all mind games. Mind loves rationalizing. Whatever mind does, it gives strong reasons for it. And that too immediately. Even a criminal has a valid reason to commit a crime. Mind rationalizes all its actions as well as mistakes. While rationalizing again, thoughts will enter and so will the mind. Thought is the vehicle for mind to move around. So if you make any mistakes, then there is no need to feel guilty or need to rationalize it. We are all human beings. So we are bound to commit mistakes, but as a human, we should be wise enough to learn from our mistakes as well as from others and not to commit the same mistake again and again. Accepting your mistakes opens the door to learning from it as well as avoiding it in future. Therefore, one should accept the mistake as soon as one finds and then move on with life rather than brooding over it for a long period of time and suffering. Mind loves contemplation. 
Many times it happens that you go on thinking over a problem for a long period of time but are not able to reach to any conclusion. But still you go on contemplating as mind rationalizes by saying that we are coming to a conclusion. In reality, even after five hours of contemplating, we are at the same place as we were over five hours ago. Mind wants to know everything before doing or starting it. Mind believes that by thinking and contemplating we are doing something constructive. Paradoxically, when the time comes to take decisions, then you always know what you have to do. In that exact moment, we are able to make decisions. If we take decisions of life moment to moment, then our being guides us. If we are not bothered with the next moment and we believe as each moment comes, then we are always guided by our being or intuition or we never make any mistakes. Whenever we make any decision from mind, then we are always deceived and secondly mind will also rationalize our decisions but at times we will always have a guilt feeling. Mind is confusion. Even after hours of thinking mind is not able to come to a conclusion because mind is always divided. Whenever it speaks in favor after a few moments it will speak against also. Mind is always in dilemma and confusion. Mind is some total of our experiences, all our conditionings, all our belief systems. It has nothing of its own, no center. Mind is just a big hard drive which has stored all types of data. Mind needs a master who can make use of this vast information. But that master is asleep and only meditation can awake the master. Once master is awake, then mind is a wonderful servant. It happens, you go to a shopping mall and buy a shirt. After a few minutes, you will always find another shirt which is better than the one that you have bought. This happens with anything. Mind is never sure of anything, not even of this decision. So be aware of the mind. Use meditation as a technique to go beyond mind. You will find there is meaning in life. Otherwise, life will remain insipid and barren.